Um, if people give me a thumbs up, then I will start with uh, the, the presentation. Yep. Can you still hear me? All good? Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So, thumbs up. Wonderful. Hi, Becky. Great to see you. Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. So, let me start with telling you the story of an undergraduate student, let's call him James. It's not his real name, um, but that should do. Um, James started his career about four and a half years ago as a first year undergraduate student and working with James was hmm, challenging and interesting because James sees the world in a different light. And um, one day before uh, a lecture on statistics, I came across a very upset James. He was visibly shaking, he was crying and he told me that he's going to drop out from university because university is simply not for him. The lectures are confusing, there are too many people in there, the voices in his head are too loud, the light hurts his eyes and he just simply can't cope with it. Now as an academic you're not prepared for anything like that. You think, oh my God, what can I do? I can't remember at that time whether James attended. I tried to calm him down, but of course it stayed with me. And I asked myself, is there anything that I can do for James? Perhaps I can um, go to his accommodation, go to his room, do one-to-one -one tuitions, do lectures just for him. But in a way, this is not this is not scalable, because there's not just one James out there. There are more people with problems out there. And for example, um, the National Students Union uh, did a survey, and they found that seventy-eight percent of students experienced mental health issues in 2014. A third of the students uh, had experienced suicidal thoughts during the past academic year in 2018. And when I spoke to the uh, head of well-being at the University of Kent, uh, she confirmed that 31% of students had declared a mental health condition in 2015-16. And if you uh, think about these numbers, this is a these numbers are big. So what can we do to support James? Surely there is a better solution than doing individual lectures uh, for these students. And I was thinking about that. And by sheer coincidence, a couple of weeks later, a solution sort of presented itself. Uh, because over dinner, my then 12-year-old son actually asked me whether he can uh, sign up to a Twitch account. Now, being of the suspicious persuasion, especially when your teenage son asks you for something, I said, I need some more information about that. And that evening, I learned uh, quite a lot about online gaming and live streaming. And something extraordinary. There is actually pe there are people out there who watch other people playing games on their computers. And I thought, wow, that's, 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 that's really interesting. 
maybe, just maybe, this is something that can be utilized to help people like James. Maybe I can gameplay live stream my lectures. So my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences and I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to share with you my experience of live streaming of lectures. So, in a way, we had um, the technology, so gaming, live streaming exists, but of course, the technology had to adapt to the way I want to teach and not the other way around. So, for example, I do not like slides. Um, a presentation like that you will never see from me because what I do like is a developing approach uh, to learning and teaching. So this means I write and develop ideas and concepts on a board. And in this case, the board is my uh, tablet screen. So for example, here, Um, I want to write on it and the students then can see it. I also don't like to be tethered to the front of the lecture theatre. I really like to walk around, have a chat with the student. How do you solve this problem? Um, what would you do? What would come out if we, if we change things? I like the students to interact with me. In the lecture theatre. So I want them to ask questions. I want them to answer questions that I ask. And I want these interactions, I want these things to be recorded. Not the students being recorded, but my scribbles, my uh, equations, how I develop things, and of course my voice. And the final bit, that I really wanted is, it had to be really easy and straightforward. I don't want to lug around my laptop or connect to uh, Apple TV before the lecture. That is just stress and I can do without that. So I want something really, really easy. And after a quite a lot of trial and error, I think I came up with something that is reasonably workable. So how does it work? Well, I've got, as I said, an iPad or I can do that with any kind of uh, tablet. And I have an uh, account with a gaming platform. In this case, it is called, uh, let me write that down, Omelet Arcade. It's a free account. And it's basically nothing else but uh, a streaming service that sends whatever I see from on my, on my screen, on my iPad screen, it sends it straight to YouTube. And like you, the students then can watch what's going on in the lecture on their devices, on their phones, on their iPads, on their computers, wherever in the world they are whether they are living in Rutherford College or whether they are in Starbucks in Kuala Lumpur, they can see it. And like some of you have done, they can also ask questions uh, or make comments in the chat function of YouTube. Now, what about the students in the lecture theater? How do they access it? Well, the, the, the answer is very simple because what I do in the lecture theater is on the screen, I put up the YouTube stream. So the students in the lecture theater and the students in wherever they are see exactly the same thing. And I can see the comments uh, in the lecture theater. Sometimes I disable them if it gets too wild uh, what students are talking about. Um, but uh, very often the comments are quite useful and um, it's quite uh, sometimes entertaining. There's a, a little bit of banter developing and uh, it's, it's, it's good fun. So students in the lecture theatre 
and uh, wherever in the world they are, they see the same thing. Setup is very easy and I will leave uh, instructions for the setup, how people can set up this, these accounts. Uh, I will leave them then in the description um, uh, under this uh, live stream uh, YouTube video. So it works really well. What does it look like? Well, as you can see, um, it is here my scribbles. Of, uh, we did a t-test in Excel, um, how I developed it. And here we've got the chat function and people are asking questions or they are answering questions. And yes, uh, I think uh, Kathleen makes a, makes a quite a nice uh, uh, point here. I can see the chat, obviously. And uh, usually when you tune into my live streams at the beginning, usually there is uh, for about 15 minutes, there's nothing else but uh, saying hello to students, good morning or good afternoon or something like that. And uh, that develops a nice connection. So I think that's, that's very much appreciated by the students. So this is what it looks like. What do students know? What are the advantages then of streaming? Why do I do that? Why is it so helpful? Well, first of all, it's flexible. I can do it wherever I want to do it. It's cheap, it's scalable. Actually, it doesn't make any difference whether it is five students watching or 5,000 students watching. Because as long as I got decent bandwidth, it should be all right. And bandwidth at the university is good. Bandwidth at home is perhaps not so great because everybody is watching YouTube videos at the moment with the lockdown, but uh, never mind. It surely it can be used for conferences <laughs> like we do for students on placements. Um, I have an example for uh, sort of an apprenticeship and a placement student. And when I created this uh, presentation, uh, self-isolation wasn't on the card. Uh, but of course, now this is a big thing. What's really important is it gives students choices. And that is really important. Students can choose whether they go to the face-to-face -face lecture or whether they want to watch it somewhere else. And I think that is really, really important. And I recently learned that there is a model which is called the HyFlex model. HyFlex, or it's also called BlendFlex model. That has this flexibility for the students at heart and the uh, research on it is really, really encouraging. It was originally designed to help students with some kind of disabilities like James, who were not able to attend these lectures. But I also discovered, and I will discuss that in a minute, I discovered that uh, students with other disabilities can benefit from it. And it also allows uh, commuting students to be present. We know that uh, commuting students can be a bit of a problem. There was recently uh, a report uh, from HEPI uh, saying that more support is needed for commuter students. Now, what do the students actually think about it? So I did a little bit of a survey and asked students how they feel about it. And here are some comments. And I think I just leave you, uh, uh, give you a few seconds to look at that. Um, so basically it gives students a choice about the learning environment. Students say if they are too overwhelmed and let's not forget a lot of students feel something like that. That they sometimes get, it's, it's just simply getting too much. It's overwhelming. Now this comment here is really interesting because Actually, I know that student, 
this student has a physical disability. He goes to the lecture. He has his laptop open. And because there is only a one to two second lag between what I do and what usually YouTube shows them, the student who has adjusted his laptop to his particular needs um, is actually able to make the most of the lecture. So this is a, a, was absolutely great to see. I have another student whose handwriting uh, speed is pretty slow. And what he does is, again, in the lecture theater, he takes screenshots from YouTube and annotates them by typing. And I thought, this is, this, these students are pure genius. That's absolutely amazing. I know, I know that people at the university probably get a little bit upset about the, um, the next comment. Uh, they, the students uh, say they really like YouTube compared to Moodle. Uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss that here. Um, and um, again, students uh, made comments about uh, how easily it is uh, accessible and uh, how they can um, change the speed of the recording backwards forwards because youtube actually does what youtube does it the, 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 the videos the live streams can be then uh, access uh, accessed uh, they are public streams and uh, people can look at them now i have to say i deliberately made them public because I am a great believer in open educational resources. If people really want to watch my uh, sessions, then I welcome them uh, with open arms. I know that I have sometimes students there who are not my students. And I know that in this, uh, this, this the current uh, presentation is watched by a student uh, who is uh, actually a student, not a conference participant. Uh, but that's absolutely wonderful, I think, because it allows people from all over the world to engage with learning material. And I think that's, that's really, I like that. Um, here's a blank slide. Uh, originally, I had some videos uh, from uh, students in here, but then I thought uh, maybe I shouldn't show that because, of course, we need to be aware that uh, it, these things are live streamed. So I need to be careful what I'm saying. People need to be careful what, I'm, what, what they are saying. It's also important to ensure that no copyrighted material is a broadcast. That goes without saying. Uh, because otherwise you get a community stroke from YouTube and they might uh, disable your account. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is I demonstrated a couple of uh, comments from from students. Another thing that students in these uh, videos uh, that I wanted to show but decided against, um, what students said was they commented on the uh, caption, the closed, the automatic closed caption that YouTube allows, and. Um, one student, an international student, said for her this is really, really helpful because English is not her native language. So when she is doing revisions, she just simply turns on the, uh, the, the, the subtitles in her native language and it makes her help uh, understand the topic much easier. Another student with a hearing uh, disability actually said uh, she is watching the uh, YouTube live stream in the lecture theater on her laptop, but she has put the 
automatic uh, caption on in the lecture theater so she can read the the live stream um, and does not have to focus on lip reading during the lecture and i thought again this is this is a fantastic uh, way of using the technology i don't have to do anything because the lecture that I deliver is exactly the same, whether it's in class or online, but there are so many facets and aspects from students here uh, that obviously makes them, helps them to engage and better understand uh, what they're supposed to learn. And finally, another student also then commented and said, I'm not one of your first year students. Uh, I'm actually a student on placement, but uh, I really like uh, these lectures that you do because it's relevant, it's, for example, it's statistics, and uh, it helps me to refresh uh, my uh, knowledge of uh, these uh, things that I was supposed to learn in the first year, which I have forgotten, but now I get a refresher and I can watch it uh, while it actually happens. And actually it makes me feel like a member of an academic community, although I'm on placement. I thought when I heard that, wow, that's really, really cool. Now, of course, what about attendance? And I think uh, Judy uh, already alluded to that because we need to discriminate between attendance and engagement. Now I can, of course, I can look at um, how many students are looking at the uh, live stream. Actually, at the moment, I know that 41 people are watching the live stream. Uh, of course, I don't know what percentage of people this uh, is. Uh, but with uh, YouTube analytics, I can drill down a little bit. I'm supposed to have 250 students in the lecture, but uh, well, you know, about, I would say about 50% uh, usually attend the lecture. And um, well, hopefully quite a lot of students are then also watching, not in the lecture. Interesting was the average length of watching. And I think that is not too dissimilar to what uh, Judy reported. Uh, how long do people actually engage with watching things? And I would say this also tallies quite nicely with, um, with my attention span. About 20 minutes or so attention span and then I lose interest. But nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, it gives me uh, quite interesting information. Am I worried about the attendance? Actually, no. Um, when people say, well, your attendance goes down, my answer would be, yes, of course it goes down. That is the nature of the beast because the students actually have the choice of face-to-face -face or online and uh, a lot of students when I ask them um, to use the chat function there is quite a lot of uh, things going on in the chat and I ask them why don't you say anything in the lecture well this they say in the lecture nobody asks a question nobody puts their hand up because we think you know what are our peers thinking but if they can use the chat function um things work and i say to them but you know other people read that yeah that doesn't matter uh, we are very comfortable with uh typing things but we are not comfortable uh talking and uh asking questions and i thought oh that's 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 really interesting so there is a lot of engagement and the other thing that i want to add here is really um we know that lectures are just one tool for the delivery of learning and teaching. And we know from a lot of uh, scientific research that lectures are, if you think about it, not a terribly effective one. Uh, as Judy uh, 
pointed out rightly, um, there are far better tools or complementary tools to supplement learning, like Ombia. Uh, I do a lot of um, quizzes. I give a lot of practice questions to students. So uh, let me uh, quickly bring that up here. Um, I have set up a, a website, for example, where students uh, can do unlimited questions. So uh, I, I did a little bit of programming and they can check uh, their answers and so on and so forth. So uh, these are additional tools for students, uh, which I think they are uh, quite helpful. I'm aware of the time, so I just want to leave you with some references uh, if you really want to look up um, some uh, research, especially about the uh, HyFlex model. And I guess you probably ask what happened to James? Well, James took a year out. He got the right medication for his condition. He got the right support from the university. And had it not been for this stupid virus, I would have very much looked, been looking forward to seeing James graduate this year with a first class honors degree in biosciences in the cathedral. We have to postpone it until November, but nevertheless, he made it and I'm extremely pleased for him. So, all I can say now is thank you very, very much for watching my presentation, for some uh, excellent points on the chat. And um, I will uh, post the uh, setup instructions in the description to this live stream. And I will now head over to the Teams um, app and um, um, answer any questions if there are. And uh, do you go to every bioscience graduation each year? I absolutely do, yes. Uh, because this is, I have to say, this is the highlight of my year. So I head over to the Teams uh, chat and um, wish you all